Hello, in this video we are going to show you how to draw a circle in OpenGL using a triangle fan. We've learnt about triangle fans which have a central vertex and we use vertexes around it to draw a bunch of triangles that are connected. But we can also draw a circle because if we have a central vertex and a bunch of triangles, if we make them the same size and the same spacing, the same angles and all that other good stuff, we eventually get a circle. The more sides we have, okay, the more vertices that we provide, the more circular and the more round our circle will look. So we're going to create a really cool method. It'll be called draw circle and we'll be able to call it and we'll pass in a few parameters. We'll be setting the position, we'll be specifying how many sides we want, we'll be specifying all that great stuff and you'll be able to reuse that method to be able to draw circles and even other shapes really because like I said it uses an X number of sides so if you were to use six sides that's a hexagon it'll be an equilateral hexagon so we're going to have a really cool piece of code that is easily reusable and modifiable the first thing that we want to do in this video is do hash include math.h so we're including the math header from here we're going to be using cosine sine and pi next we're just going to do void draw circle because this is where our method is going to be called it's going to take a few parameters gl float x gl float y g l float z gl float radius now gl int number of sides in many ways this is where the beauty happens and you'll be seeing what i mean later on in this video the reason we put a semicolon on not some angle brackets i'm sure you've done this if you're in this video because you must be a I want to say a C++ expert, but good at C++. We've just, just created the outline here. I'm going to be implementing it down here. So in here, there is a bunch of stuff that we need to do. First of all, we're going to do GL int number of vertices. And this equals number of sides plus Two. The reason we're creating a local variable that says number of vertices equals the number of sides plus two is because we have more than. Okay, I'm actually going to draw it out because it's going to be easier if I draw this out for you. Imagine if we have a central point right here. So this is one vertex, and I have a vertex here, vertex here vertex here and one final vertex here so we have a total of five vertices do, 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 do. what was i going on okay yeah i'm going to draw it now so if i were to draw it we have our it's not much of a circle but we have our circle with four triangles ignore this line right here i'm actually going to undo it because i don't like that line where it is So we got four triangles. You might be thinking we have one vertex, two vertex, three vertex, four vertex, and five vertex. And you're correct. We do have five vertex, and that is well n plus one. But let me show you it in a different way. We have our central point, and let's just draw a simple triangle. So that requires two more vertices. So we're going to do one, two. Now let's draw our triangle. So we got our triangle drawn, and at the moment we have one, two, three vertices. Now let's change color. We have three vertices for one triangle. So how many vertices do I need, let's say, for two triangles? you need to add an extra vertex so put one here just draw 
our extra triangle. So now we have four vertices. So it's you can think of it as three plus n minus one. So in this is example, if we wanted to draw two triangles, it would be three plus two minus one, which is three plus one, which equals four. So we need four vertices. And for example, imagine if we were to draw a hexagon, it would be three plus six minus one, three plus five, which is equal to eight. So that's the reason we were doing right here number of vertices equal number of sides plus two. I hope that helped illustrate the reason for this. If it didn't, feel free to message us and we'll help you get your head around it. Next, this is very simple, GL float double pi. So we're going to be using double the value of pi and this will equal 2.0f times by m underscore pi m underscore pi is defined within the math header and we'll just show you the right here it's like 30 odd decimal points we could create our own definition but why would we it's already here we've got pi divided by 2 pi divided by 4 we've got all this other good stuff so next we're going to be doing is gl float circle vertices X. So this is going to be a circle vertices array and the size of this is going to be number of vertices and we're going to create two more arrays like this one one for the Y points and one for, one for the Z points later on in this method we'll actually combine these three arrays into one single array because that's what our draw array method will take or the OpenGL drawer method will take. You might be thinking isn't that sort of inefficient? Yeah it is more inefficient or it's not as efficient as having one single array and just adding it all to that but we just found that this was a good compromise in terms of readability, in terms of teaching the triangle fan method for drawing a circle and actual efficiency itself because what we're doing is very simple so it doesn't really matter but we are actually in the middle of creating a library for drawing triangles circles cubes all that other good stuff and texturing and in that library for example we are going to make it as efficient as we can because really you won't be peeking behind the scenes because you'll be calling simple methods but you can easily adapt this and make it more efficient yourself. I just for a mention that in case some of you are wondering why are we creating three different arrays. First, we're going to do circle vertices x, 0 equals x. And let me just do y and z and let me explain what we're doing right here. z, change this to a y this to a Z and you might be wondering what are we doing and what we're doing is simply uh, setting the central point of our circle so these coordinates if I didn't explain before are the center point of our circle basically what we had right here right there that's basically what we just did and now we are going to loop and actually create all the other vertices. So we're going to do 4 int i equals 1. We're not starting at 0 because we've already set 0 ourselves. So we start at 1, not i, 1. i equals 1. i is less than number of vertices i plus plus now in here we're going to do circle vertices x i equals x 
plus the radius times by cosine i times by double no not that double double pi double pi divide by the number of sides so we're just calculating the positions right here so they're dynamically positioned because that allows us to easily just adapt it and create a hexagon pentagon octagon circle with 360 sides which we'll all do later on in this video but let's just copy and paste this chain this to a y I'm going to chain this to a y radius instead of cos or cosine it's sine now it's still i times by double pi divided by number of sides lastly circle versus z i equals z every single vertex or z vertex will be set to our z value because it's a circle it's a 2d shape it doesn't have depth next we're going to do gl float or circle vertices so this is going to be the array with all our vertices combined that we spoke about earlier on and for the size of this it's going to be number telesense is really buggering up for some reason number of vertices times by three you might be thinking why is it times by three remember we got an x array a y array and a z array so we're not just doing this let's say if we passed in six sides we're not just doing six plus two which is eight we're not just doing eight we're doing 24 because each one of those points have an x y and a z value and now it's all simple stuff we're going to loop through our all circle vertices and add all these x y and z vertices into it so int i equals zero i less than number of vertices i plus plus in here we do all circle vertices i times by three let me just write this out and then i'll explain what we're doing here circle vertices i get the y value and for this it's i times by three plus one chain this to a y i times by three plus two chain this to a z and what we're doing here i times by three so imagine if this was zero zero times by three is zero so it's all circle vertices at index zero set it to the first x vertex for y it will be zero times by three plus one which is one so set the second vertex index or yeah the second index to the first y coordinate and then set the third all circle vertices index to the circle vertex z and I am wondering why we did this and the reason is because we've combined it we need to add them one after each other and we need to do 0 1 2 3 I mean 0 1 2 then 3 4 5 6 7 8 and this little formula right here i ton by 3 plus 1 i ton by 3 plus 2 will make sure our x y and z coordinates are with the corresponding x y and z coordinates so when we actually get on to drawing it which is now it will be correct so first of all gl enable client state this is all simple stuff and we're just telling open gl that we're dealing with a vertex array with anything that you enable make sure you disable it so we're going to do gl underscore vertex array inside we're going to do gl vertex pointer this simply points to our vertices array aka this one and for the size it's free because we have x y and z coordinates for the type it's gl underscore float for the stride is zero because we don't have any gaps or any extra information in our vertices array to, relating to stuff like texture coordinates and color and for the pointer we simply point to our vertices vertices array so that's also called vertices telesense seems to be okay now it's weird 
GL draw arrays GL underscore triangle underscore fan and we're going to start at the first index and we have the count is number of vertices so there you go we have our draw circle method you might think that's a whole heap of work for drawing a circle and in many ways it is but watch this to actually draw it once you've got it, you can draw as many circles as you want it's ridiculously simple you do draw circle and for the x value i'm going to put screen underscore width divided by two so it's in the center of the screen i'm going to do the same for the height i mean same for the y position i should say and for the z value i'm going to put zero for the radius i'm going to put something like 120 yeah that should be big enough and for the number of sides i'm going to put 360 initially run this now we now have a circle I moved my window and my circle changed size and it slightly moved those of you that have been watching this series already know the reason for that if you haven't been the reason is I've sort of hacked the way my screen displays the resolution or I've basically hacked the resolution of my iMac and that allows me to create really high resolution videos for YouTube so it won't happen to you or if you create a game and you give it to people it won't happen to them because they won't be really they should they won't and shouldn't be messing around with their screen resolution in the way i have so again you will just see it like this so i every time i move it and it adjusts that won't affect you but there you go we have a circle now imagine if i wanted to draw a hexagon instead of specifying 360 sides if i put six watch this now we have a circle that consists of six equal sides and equal angles and as a result we have a hexagon maybe i want a pentagon you guessed it you specify the number five we have a pentagon could specify the number four and we have a square don't see the point of doing this because you can do g l quad and that will be a lot easier and a lot more efficient and that's the same for three vertices because this will draw an equilateral triangle but there's no point because you would rather use the GL triangles if you go to any number below three it just doesn't draw anything so the minimum number of shapes or sides that you need for a circle is three for example imagine if I were to put 19 319 that's still very circular let's put 19 and there you go we can see that it's not a circle it, it looks like the barrels that you would get in games especially when you get close up to it and you can see all the different straight lines so this is fantastic you can easily create circle and many other equilateral shapes basically any equilateral shape above a triangle and I guess you wouldn't consider a line an equilateral shape so yeah you can create any equilateral shape now using this one method that is the beauty of what we've done in this video I actually recommend creating some other methods stuff like draw hexagon draw pentagon draw octagon stuff like that and actually manipulate the draw circle method and a little clue you don't need to specify the number of sides for that because if you're drawing a hexagon that's six sides so the user wouldn't need to specify this that's just an extra task for you if you want to check out this source code don't worry there'll be a link in the description to our github page which has the source code from this video and the source code from every other video in this series if you have any questions Feel free to post it on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash question.php. There'll be another link in the description to that, so you don't need to remember that because we've done a lot of code here, and I don't think you want to start remembering URLs. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and leave us a comment because it really does help. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.